Hi, it's Jeff Boucher at Hero Complex The Show. You're watching us here on the Nerdist channel. What is the greatest comic book ever made? Well, we could talk about that all day, but I could tell you what my favorite comic book is, Superman vs. Muhammad Ali. It was by Denny O'Neill and the great Neil Adams. We had our interview with Neil Adams on the last show. Today it's part two, and we focus on this book, which to me is still the champ. This is Superman vs. Muhammad Ali. It's one of those ideas that if you first hear it, you say, what a stupid idea. <laughs> and then, but what this turned out to be was such a fantastic snapshot of a time. Um, and also it had some really deep messages in it. And, and I know for a lot of people like of my generation, this was the greatest comic book ever made. How did it start? It started with Julie Schwartz, who said it would be a great idea to do Superman versus Muhammad Ali, and everybody laughed at him and thought it was crazy. Uh, but Jeanette Kahn, who was the new publisher at DC Comics, said, no, no, we, I think we can make it happen. And, of course, then you had two people. It was Julie and Jeanette, and nobody else. <laughs> uh, they had to contact the Muhammad Ali, who at that point was, uh, had, uh, uh, was part of the Muslim thing. Sure. And, uh, and, uh, that we had to get approvals all the way down the line. So Denny and I, who was going to be the writer on it, who started some of the writing chores, but had to drop out. We had to get we had to go to Chicago and be uh, be uh, approved by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to do the to do the project, who was representing Ali at the time. And so we went. We got approved, and everything was fine. Uh, and we realized it, there was this kind of building realization that this could be a worldwide hit. Yeah. But it, it only happened in, in, in our brains very, very quietly. It, you know, when anybody talked about it, they go, you're doing Superman versus Muhammad Ali? Yeah, we are, really. So it amped up, like for example, this cover has hundreds of famous people. Sure, you got uh, the, the sweat hogs. The sweat hogs, right. You got the Osmonds. Right. You got Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, right. Uh, you got... President Carter. Uh, Telly Savalas, who, who actually we became, became Luthor. I was going to say. Yeah. Telly Savalas didn't want to be part of it, so I was we said, well, guess what? It's Luthor. <laughs> yeah, did, was the lollipop right there? The lollipop was right there. Really? Just, how did we disguise Telly Savalas? We took the lollipop out of his hand. That's fantastic. But you can see his hand is poised there for a lollipop in his hand. Alfred E. Newman? Alfred E. Newman. Uh, there were, and what they decided to do was they decided, and this is the kind of the game, it's a double game, okay? So certain people in here, you know, they're a little hard to identify, rejected the idea. So then they came back to me and they said, okay, we, that person can't be in. I said, no, I've just drawn all these faces in here. You're making me crazy. So what I did when I was left the opportunity was I put mustaches on. So if you can have that kind of x-ray vision where you can look through the mustache and see, you'll discover, for example, that that's John Wayne Wow. with a mustache. I kind of thought that was Stan Lee when I was a kid. Oh, no, that's John Wayne. If you take that mustache off, there's John Wayne underneath there. That's great. So there's a series of people that are, are disguised because they didn't give their approval. And they're not on the list of people who are indicated. And then you got, uh, is that John Denver and Cher? No, this is, uh, this is uh, Andy Warhol. Oh, I'm And sorry. that is Cher. Oh, Cher. Maybe his hair should have been a little bit lighter, whiter. Uh, the smile made me, i never seen Andy Warhol smile. Oh, uh, well, I, I got photos of Andy Warhol smile. He actually did smile. Donnie and Marie. Yes, the Osmonds, right? And then... Uh, on the, and the, the woman and the man who played the, uh, Noel Neal and the guy who played Superman in the, in the early serials. Uh, Kirk Allen? Kirk Allen. Kirk Allen. Right there. That's, That's pretty good, Allen, right? right? That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> very good. That's fun. Ford, Henry, uh, President Ford. Ford and his wife. Sure. Um, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. And, and Clark Kent. And Clark Kent. But wait. Clark Kent. Clark Kent. Uh, wait. Exactly. Exactly. I, I don't understand. There's gags in here. There's gags. You got to go with the gags. And then, uh, oh, and that's uh, the guy who did uh, Gunsmoke on radio. What's his name? Uh, and then he had his own uh, TV show. It's kind of short, uh, short, Gay gruff. Eden? No, oh, gruff. Uh, uh, William Cannon? Uh, yeah, William, Cannon. William, Con um, William Conrad. William Conrad, William Conrad who played Cannon. Who played Cannon. And he also played, <laughs> he also played uh, 
Is James Arness's part on the radio show. And he was the voice of the narrator on the Quinn Martin production. There you go. And the, the thing about him is that everybody wanted him to be uh, 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 the, the sheriff on the, on the TV show, but he was this short, round guy. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Got a great voice. Who's this guy with the very large cranium? That's Wally Wood. Oh, Wally Wood. Wally, now, Wally Wood. Wood, a very sad story. He was alive at that time, and it is a very sad story. What I did after I did the stars is I continued to put other people in there. There's the Jackson 5. Sure. Uh, this is uh, James Garner. Oh, I love James Garner. I put my daughter, Chris. Oh, that's nice. So one of the things about this with all these people, because DC did ask for permission, this was a book that did not get reprinted for many, many years, and the not, cover was part of the not, reason. Not for that reason, not no. for that reason. Uh, I think I, I, I can tell you the truth on this because, you know, the truth is actually stranger than fiction. It, it happened because I wrote the contract for myself to do this because DC Comics was not used to writing contracts. And they, and they paused on the contract for six months, and I finally said, look, if you guys are having trouble writing a contract, I'll just write the contract. So I wrote the contract. But the contract was a little bit favorable to me. <laughs> and now they couldn't do the reprint. So I had my daughter go over there and say, look, if the only thing that's holding this up is dad's contract, let's rewrite the contract. Right. We can just change it. So that made them go back to the Ali people for the second time and then say, why don't we just do this? That's so right. everything just kind of folded together. And this, although this is not as big as the, as the other version, as the first version, sure. it's, oh, it's also beautiful. quite large. Yeah, it's and, beautiful too. Uh, and there's things in here that, are, that mean a lot to me and a lot to other people. There's a lot of, almost everybody relates to this. Everybody has their favorite things. You have a line in here. I don't know if we can find the line. Maybe we can find the line. So here's the line that we were talking about. For those of you who are wondering why Superman agreed to fight with his costume on, it's because many of our alien spectators wouldn't be able to tell the fighters apart, except for subtle changes in hue. All humans look exactly alike to them. That is an Archie Bunker line right there. I, I, that's a... Um, uh, uh, we'll call this one Norman a Neil Lear. Adams It's line. a Norman Lear. Yes, exactly. That's a, a fantastic moment right there. And then there's a moment... And it just slips by. Yeah, that's right. You have to look for it or Can't know it. Throw that hook into it. There's also a scene in here where we see Superman uh, devastated. And as a child, I used to look at this picture and I was haunted by it. Um, you rarely see... Never see. The hero uh, see. in that position or in that. Well, that's one thing that, to me, the idea was to make Superman human. Because he's an alien, you know, he's, he could have three heads down his back or something. Yeah. Superman is a human, uh, maybe part of the same species, but super elevated in some way. But without that, you don't get the sense of the character, yeah. in my opinion. And when you hit that page, you go, oh my God, yeah. he can be beat up. And what that does, and then, and then, and then you realize, well, wait a second, if somebody's going to fight for the Earth, and it's going to be our greatest champion, then if you can make things equal by, like for example, putting Superman under a red sun, right. Superman is not going to be our greatest champion. No. Our greatest champion is going to be Ali. Right. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. Then Superman gets his gets his uh, his powers back, of course. He has this moment of triumph. He returns. This is the reintroduction of Superman. I got to reintroduce Superman to anybody who hadn't read the Superman comic book. You read this and you go, oh, that's Superman. I get it. Battling in space with aliens, fighting for the Earth, just like Ali is fighting in the ring. That's right. How, to be, how do I want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as the father of comic books. Uh, I, think, I truly believe that this is the greatest medium that artists have ever had. Uh, we went from cave drawings and telling stories in front of cave drawings to... Uh, stories on the walls that were embedded into the walls and then pictures hung on the walls which is a very odd thing to see to illustration in magazines and movie posters and all the rest of it to finally get back to what we did on the caves tell stories with pictures yeah. which is what film does which was theater does and what we do in comic books and it's always been this side thing waiting to be born it's always been there and always ready to blossom and now it's blossomed. And it is going to be, in my opinion, the greatest form of graphic arts and storytelling that has ever existed on Earth. And if I can be considered to be right there at the initiation of it, that's great for me.